This video is for 0324, Tuesday, July 19th, the fourth day of our semester. And uh, the third day was when actual learning began. So the first two days were just reading the syllabus and getting signed up for my math lab. So day three, Monday, July 18th, you should have worked on the first three homeworks in my math lab, which I'll open up right now. So again, come into the 0324 homework. Come down to assignments. So homeworks one, two, and three, that was what Monday, July 18th video showed how to do. And we got hundreds on all three of those. So today we're doing homework four and five. Tomorrow we'll do six and seven. And then you've got the rest of the week till Friday night to try the quiz as many times as you want. It has an infinite number of attempts until the Friday night deadline. But you must get at least 70% of all these homeworks correct before you can even open the quiz. And you also don't want to be too bogged down here and spending all your time till Friday night working on this stuff and not leave yourself any time for the other class. So ideally, you should take the quiz Thursday and do the test in the other class on Friday. But they're open all the way till Friday. If you do them both on Tuesday or both on Friday, you just you got to do them sometime in the week. It just depends how much time you're wanting to put into this. So everybody's working at their own pace sort of deal. I'm just trying to keep you on pace, a good pace so that you don't run out of time. Homework for simplifying fractions. 15 questions here. Okay, identify the following number is prime, composite, or neither. If it's composite, write it as a product of prime factors. So a prime number is a number that only divides by one in itself. Um, composites are ones that can be written as a product of prime factors. In other words, they divide by something other than one in themselves. And then if you had something special, I guess, like a, a pi or a square root, that would be the neither case. So if we just get a number like one, one is definitely prime because it only divides by one. Oops, okay. If it's composite, okay, so. A natural number greater than, okay, so I guess they're defining, they're not defining one as prime because this is why they have the third case. Because the main definition of prime is you have to be able to divide only by one and itself. So since one is already itself, that technically doesn't qualify. So the first prime number is actually two. Two divides by only one in itself. Three divides by only one in itself. Uh, this must be neither since it's the only number that's not going to be either case. Okay, so one's kind of a special case. Once you hit four, four divides by one, two, and four. So that's not prime. That's called composite. And I guess one is its own category. So 42 is that first say, is it prime? Does it only divide by one and 42? Then it's prime, but it divides by other numbers. So then it's composite and we want to write it as a product of prime factors. So here's the best way to do this. Oh, I know. Okay. So I'm going to come back here. 42. Put the number down and then just think of any two numbers that multiply and equal that. And there may be more than one combination you could say. You could say 21 times 2, but I'm going to say 6 times 7. And sometimes there's many choices you could make. So it doesn't matter which one you think of first. Whatever you think of first, write that down. 6 times 7 is 42. 2 times 21 is 22, whatever you want to do first. 7 is prime, so that one's done. 6 is 2 times 3. And now both of those are prime. So 2 is prime because it only divides by 1 and 2. 3 is prime and only divides by 1 and 3. 7 is prime and only divides by 1 and 7. 
So we can write 42 as a product of prime numbers. 2 times 3 times 7 is how you get 42. So if you get any number that divides by something other than 1 in itself, then it's called composite. And you can do this little breakdown then. If it's prime, then it's just divisible by 1 in itself. And then I guess technically 1 is not considered prime because it only has it's only divisible by 1. It's kind of a special case where it's it's not divisible by one and itself. It's only divisible by one thing. So I guess you have to be divisible by two things, one and itself, to be considered prime. So this would be two times three times seven. That's how you get 42. And we're breaking it down to all of its prime numbers, basically. Okay, 144 definitely divides by something other than 1 and 144. It definitely divides by 2 because it's an even, even number. So if you get a really large one, one way to start is that, is say if it's any even number, it definitely divides by 2. So in my branch, I can do 2 and whatever. 14 divided by 2 is 7. And 4 divided by 2 is 2. That's one way to divide by 2 if they come out evenly. And then 72 divides by 2, because that's an even number. That's 36. 36, you could either do 2 and 18, or 3 and 12, or 4 and 9, or 6 and 6. It really doesn't matter which one you guess. So pick one of those four that you like. I'll just say 4 and 9. 4 is 2 times 2. 9 is 3 times 3. So all the branches lead to 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 3. And both 2 and 3 are prime numbers. So 144, I can either write 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. I'm not sure if they want that. They're either going to want you to write the answer like this. Or a shorter way is when you have four 2s multiplied together, you could write 2 to the 4th power. And then there's two threes, so three squared. So maybe they would take either of these answers. Maybe they only want one of them. One little negative side to these computer homeworks is you sometimes have to figure out what kind of answer they want. It's not always obvious. Okay, a product of primes. It doesn't say whether they want the exponents or not. So we'll just try it one way. Let's try it the shorter way. Will they take two to the fourth power? times 3 squared. If so, that's less typing. That's what I always do, is try that. See, they took that version. So then they should have, they should have, you should be able to also do 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3 times 3. And that's generally when you, when you take your tests, you're going to be in your quizzes, you're going to be doing them in this program. So you want to make sure you know how they take the answers on homework. That's your key to how you should answer things on quizzes and tests. Here's one again, so we saw this one. This, I guess, is the only number that's neither prime nor composite because it only divides by one. I don't know why that came up again, but if I go back and hit similar question down here in the bottom right, five, okay, see, so if you get one and you're like, oh, I already know that one or that one's not that great, then you can hit try another and do another one. Five is a prime number because it only divides by one and five. Okay, so that was the first four questions. Question five, decide whether the following statement is true or false, or it's false, say why. Okay, the fraction 13 over 143 is in lowest terms. Okay, here's the way you can tell. 13 over 143. Potentially, both of these can be written the way we did, but 13 is prime, so 13 only makes 1 times 13. There's no other way to divide out of it. Now, 143 is a little bit large, but it ends with an odd number. Any number that ends with an odd cannot divide by 2, 4, 6, 8, or any even number. The check for 3 is the sum of all the digits has to be divisible by 3. 
1 plus 4 plus 3 is 8, so it doesn't divide by 3. If you don't divide by 3, you won't divide by 9 either. And we've already eliminated all even numbers, so 6 would have also been eliminated at that point. So that leaves 5 and 7 among the single-digit numbers. 5 only divides into numbers if they end with a 0 or a 5, so it definitely doesn't divide by 5. 7, there's not really a check, but you could just try it. But 7's going to go into 140 exactly, so there'll be a 3 left over. So 7's not going to work. It actually turns out, and maybe you wouldn't know this, but um, the next odd number, the only odd number we haven't checked yet, is the first double-digit one, 11. And the reason I know this is if you do 13 times 11... There's a little math trick for doing this. You split the three and the one apart, and then you add these two digits together. One plus three is four. So 143 is 11 times 13. That, what I just did there is I broke it down into its prime components, like the first four problems. It's just that one was harder because it was such a large number. Then this is what can happen is the 13 here can cancel this 13. So this is not in lowest terms because I can reduce it. In other words, this fraction reduces to 1 over 11. And a fraction in lowest terms is when the top and the bottom don't have any common factors they can both divide by. There's nothing both 1 and 11 divide by other than 1. So is this in lowest terms? No, because it can be simplified to the fraction 1 over 11. Which choice is the correct way to write this in lowest terms? So this is a better example. The numbers are smaller, 12 and 30. So 12 and 30, 12 over 30. So I can do what I did on the first problem, first four problems. 12 could be 3 times 4 or 6 times 2, your choice. 4 is 2 times 2. So I can either write 2 squared times 3, or because I'm maybe canceling things, I'm going to first write 2 times 2 times 3. And then 30 could be 3 times 10, or maybe you thought of 5 times 6. It doesn't matter. 2 times 5, it's all prime numbers, 2, 3, 5. This 3 can cancel that 3. This two can cancel either one of the top two, it doesn't matter which one. So I'm only left with two and five, two fifths. So the fraction 12 over 30 reduces to two over five. Which is choice B. Oh no, maybe it's, yeah, it's B. Because it wouldn't be through addition. You don't do it through addition, you want to do it through multiplication just like the first four problems. Write the fraction in lowest terms. So you can either do what I was doing just a second ago. Here's two ways to do this problem. Sometimes this takes a little while, so not everybody likes this method, but if you like this method, do this. Five is one times five only. It's the only way to make five. 20, I want to break it down, maybe 2 times 10, or maybe you thought of 4 times 5. 2 times 5. So it's 2 times 2 times 5. The 5s cancel. 1 over 4. Then you can multiply those two 2s back together again and get 4. This is one way to do the problem. The other way, some people can do this a little faster in their head or with paper, if you realize that both 5 and 20 divide by 5, that's what's actually happening when you're reducing a fraction. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. If you can do it that, that's faster than, than all the prime numbers, but it doesn't matter which way you do it. You get the same answer either way. This is very common in math where there's often more than one way to do a problem. And this one's not multiple choice, so I have to know that it reduces all the way to one-fourth. Reducing fractions is a big part of a lot of other math classes. So that's why they're teaching you this here in the 0324 class. 
So 16 over 20, either break down the prime numbers if you like that better. I'm gonna do this by the shorter method. One nice thing about even the shorter method is you don't have to get the necessarily the largest number right away. If you said these are both even numbers, I can divide them both by two for sure. 16 divided by two is eight. 20 divided by two is 10. And then you're like, wait a minute, they're both even still. So divide them by two again. 8 divided by 2 is 4. 10 divided by 2 is 5. This doesn't reduce anymore because 5 is prime. And 4 doesn't divide by 1 or 5. Well, everything divides by 1, but 4 doesn't divide by 5. Now, if you had been able to do a larger number first, then you can get to the answer quicker. But the good news is you don't have to. So some people can't do larger numbers in their head like this. But it turns out 16 divides by 4, and so does 20. And if you realize that, you would get 4 fifths all in one step instead of two steps. But you can do it the slow, steady way, where the, the rabbit wins the race slow and steady, or, I mean, not the rabbit, the tortoise. Or you can try to be the rabbit and do it real fast. Remember the hare and the tortoise? So four-fifths, either way you do that. Or you can even do the prime method where you break it all down to primes and cancel them. Whatever you like best and whatever way you can get it right the most, that's how you should do it. But do keep in mind there are more than one way to do things. Okay, 64 over 100. These definitely both divide by two. They're even numbers. See, divided by 2 is nice because you're just cutting it in half. Half of 64 is 32. Half of 100 is 50. They're still even, so they both divide by 2 again. Half of 32 is 16. Half of 50 is 25. So they definitely do not divide by 2 anymore. So you may reach a point like this where you're like, okay, I know it doesn't divide by 2, but maybe it divides by something else. Maybe it doesn't. So then you could go back to this and say 25 has to be 5 times 5. There's no other way to divide it down. And 16 could be 8 times 2 or 4 times 4. And then it could be 2 times 2 on each of those. This is literally 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 if you do the, the prime method. But nothing reduces. You got, I got four twos in the top. I got two fives in the bottom. Nothing reduces. So that tells you this is as low as it goes. So sometimes a lot of students have trouble reducing fractions. Sometimes it's that you're already at the most reduced version and you don't realize whether it can go any further or not. That can be harder sometimes. Then breaking it down into its prime numbers really helps. So... 16 over 25, it turns out both of the original numbers divided by four, actually. And here's a larger one, 204 and 168. This would definitely help to do this one slower. Well, actually I can fit it here. 204 over, I forgot what it was now, 168. They are both even numbers, they both divide by two. 204 divided by 2 is 104, yeah, divided by 2 is 102. 168, try to do it part by part if that they both divide by 2. Half of 16 is 8, and half of 8 is 4. Now, if you had like half of 15, then that doesn't work, but try it and see if you can get away with that. Divide both of these by 2. Half of 102 is 51, or think of it as half of 10 and half of 2. Half of 8 is 4, half of 4 is 2. So that's the end of dividing by 2s, because 1, 51 doesn't divide by 2. 51, 5 plus 1 is 6, so that means that's divisible by 3. And it goes in there, 3 times 20 is 60. 3 times 15 is 45. This is actually 17. Because 3 times 7, 21, carry the 2. 3 plus 2 is 5. 
Those are both prime numbers, so that's as far as that one goes. If the bottom does not have a 3 or a 17, then that means this fraction doesn't reduce. But we saw 42 already. That was 6 times 7. 2 times 3. There's all my primes, 2, 3, and 7. But they have 3 in common. So you can cancel the 3s. 17 is the only thing left in the top. The bottom has 2 and 7, so then you multiply it back together again, 14. This fraction would reduce to 17 over 14. And here's another one like it. 192 over 180, they definitely both divide by 2. 192 over 180. So now you can't really do my shortcut on the top because you can't do half of 19. If this was this was an even number, then you could cut each half in, in half. But then you just do this. 2 into 192. 2 can go into 19 9 times because 9 times 2 is 18. Bring down the 2. 2 goes into 12 6 times and then there's no remainder. So half of 192 is 96. Half of 180 is easier. That's 90. These cut in half again. Half of 90 is 45. And then for 96, you might have to do this. 2 goes into 9 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. Bring down the 6. 2 goes into 16 eight times. 8 times 2 is 16, no remainder. So that's 48. 4 plus 8 is 12, 4 plus 5 is 9, both of these numbers divide by 3, or you could start breaking them down into prime numbers if you want. 48 divided by 3 is 16, 45 divided by 3 is 15. 15 only divides by 3 and 5, and 16 does not divide by 3 or 5. So that's when you know it doesn't reduce anymore. 16 over 15. Notice in the original fraction, the top is bigger, and in the reduced fraction, that's also true. It would be impossible for the top to be smaller in the reduced fraction. Okay, write the improper fraction as a mixed number. This doesn't come up too often in math, but occasionally it does. Improper fractions are usually better in, in higher level math, so this they would normally leave the answer 16 over 15. Improper is when the top's bigger. So if you don't want that to be your answer, 48 over 11, you basically just do long division and you look for the remainder. This is gonna have a remainder now. So 11 times four would be the closest I could get to 48. 11 times four is 44. And that has a remainder of four. So the way you write this is, this is, the answer would have been 4 if it had divided evenly. And then if there's any kind of remainder, you put that next to the number as a fraction. The remainder always goes in the top. And the original divisor, they call that, is what's in the bottom. In other words, we were trying to divide by 11. We were able to do it four times, but not exactly four times. We were a little short of that. And then the remaining four wasn't able to still divide by 11. So four wasn't able to divide by 11. So I just leave that there. And then I was able to do it four times other than that. So four and four elevenths is the way this is read. Four and four elevenths. You won't see this too often though in, in other math classes. It, uh, mixed fractions get so messy that they just leave them improper most of the time. 
So click this little tool button right there. There's an improper, that's a mixed number. This is, this can be a regular fraction or an improper one, but this is a mixed number, they call that. Where you have a regular number and you have it attached to a fraction. So let's do that again, 75 divided by 14. Seventy five divided by fourteen Sometimes it's hard to tell what how many how can you get close to that? So one thing you can do is add fourteen. Fourteen plus fourteen is twenty eight, that's two. Twenty eight plus fourteen is forty two, that's three. Forty two plus fourteen would be fifty six, that's four. 56 plus 14 is 70, that's 5. And if I add 14 again, I go 84, that's too big, that's bigger than 75. So it's like the price is right. What's the closest I can get to 75 without going over? 5 is the closest I can get. 5 times 14 is 70, because I did it right there. That has a remainder of 5. Now this is just a coincidence that this happened twice in a row. But this improper fraction is the same thing as 5 and 5 fourteenths. But the top of the mixed fraction isn't always the same as the front of the number. It was a coincidence that this 5 matched this 5. And on the last problem, it happened too. 4 matched 4. That doesn't always happen. I don't know if they did that on purpose or it was just a coincidence, but... There's no rule that says that has to happen. So mixed number five and five. And the nice thing is you always know this bottom before you even start. The bottom of this 14 is always going to be the bottom of that, no matter what you get with the other numbers. So you're really just looking for that front number and then the remainder goes on top. And now we want to go the other way. The actual, actually, the other way is easier. If you want to go from a mixed fraction to an improper fraction, the process is you go 4 times 9. You do the regular number times the bottom. 4 times 9 is 36. And then you add going upward plus 1. That's 37. And the bottom is definitely 9 because the two bottoms always match each other. So it's 4 times 9 plus 1. And that's always the top and the bottom is never in question. Same thing here. We know the bottom has to be a 4 no matter what. No doubt about it. The bottoms always match. So I go downward and multiply, then up and add. 10 times 4 is 40. 40 plus 1 is 41. But notice on both of these last two, see how the 10 and the 1 are not matching each other. They don't have to. The 4 and the 1 don't match. They don't have to match. We just kind of, un, uh, surprisingly, those two in a row did match. Okay, so I've got 100 on this assignment. Now, I did all 15 problems in section, what was that? Wasn't section, that was homework 4. Okay, so back where the assignments are, I've got green checks for everything. It says I have 100% right there. If I click Assignments... You can cut more homework fours and then go all the way to the far right and see score. I think the reason they do this is a lot of students do their homework or they used to before, before the pandemic. People used to go to math labs at the college to do their homework. Or they were sitting in a class where there were computers so they could be working on their homework while class was going on. And they, I guess that my math lab thought, okay, why don't we hide the scores? So that way if somebody's sitting next to you or looking over your shoulder, they can't see your scores. And you might be embarrassed if you have low scores or something. And if you want to see them, you can just click them and open them up and see what they are. But in case you're in an area where there's other people and you don't and you have low scores, maybe you don't want them to see that. Okay, so we got 100 on all four of those. Last thing for today is multiplying and dividing fractions. And it actually turns out they did this on purpose. Multiplying and dividing fractions is a whole lot easier than adding and subtracting them, surprisingly. Because in elementary school, adding and subtracting is easier. But once you get to upper level math classes, it turns out every time you learn something new in math, like maybe you'll learn radicals, or maybe you'll learn absolute value, or you'll learn exponents, or you'll learn all different kinds of things, uh, matrices. 
it turns out each time you get to a new branch of math, the multiplying and dividing is almost always easier because the rules are less restrictive. Okay, we got 14 questions here. Okay, this is definitely easy. Oops, let me go back to the whiteboard. Multiplying fractions, you do not need a common denominator. That's what makes this easier. I have 7 over 9 times 2 over 11. It's okay if the denominators are the same or different, does not matter. What Next time, the first assignment we do tomorrow, we're going to be adding subtract fraction. Then they have to be the same. Then you're, you can't do them unless you make them the same. That's what makes those problems harder. The other difference is when you multiply or divide fractions, you do everything. We're adding and subtracting, you don't. So I am going to do 7 times 2 in the top. That's 14. And I'm going to do 9 times 11 in the bottom. That's 99. And if we can reduce, we would want to, like the last homework. But one way to tell here whether this reduces or not, I don't have to repeat all that work from last time. I don't have to break this down into prime numbers. If you look back here, as long as you don't have any addition or subtraction here, then anything in the top that divides with anything in the bottom, you can reduce that. But 7 and 2 are prime numbers. 11 is a prime number. 9 is not prime, but it only divides by 3. And neither 3 or 9 or 11, none of those numbers divide into 7 or 2. So let's say you had 7 times 2 over 9 times, say, 4. You could either do a straight across and get 14 over 36 if you want, but then notice these both divide by 2. And then it's harder to do it here because the numbers are bigger. But if both of these divide by 2, then you can do it here while the numbers are smaller. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now you get an easier problem. 7 times 1 is 7. 9 times 2 is 18. And 14 divided by 2 is 7. 36 divided by 2 is 18. It works that way too, as it should. So this was an extra example I made up. But that's your choice. So I'm looking over here and seeing 7, 2, 9, 11, and I know none of those divide by each other. So then there's no need to check this. This will be reduced. 14 over 99. So the process of multiplying fractions is generally easier. But the one downside is sometimes you have to... Um, that bigger so you can see it better sometimes you have to reduce at the end so we could do this straight across notice it says type a whole number or a fraction we can do 2 times 15 for the top and 3 times 16 for the bottom that's fine if you want to do that but then you'll have something to reduce at that point if you reduce first it'll be easier because you'll be working with smaller numbers two-thirds times 15 over 16. So I'm noticing that both 15 and 3, one from the top, one from the bottom, if there's no addition or subtraction, you can do this. It doesn't matter if they're right above each other or diagonal from each other. 15 and 3 both divide by 3. That's what we were kind of doing last time, except it was just one fraction, not 2. And both 2 and 16 divide by 2. So I can create a brand new problem that's equivalent with all smaller numbers. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 16 divided by 2 is 8. Now you go straight across and there won't be anything to reduce. 1 times 5 is 5. 1 times 8 is 8. This definitely doesn't reduce because I've already reduced it. You could have went straight across right at the start and got 2 times 15 is 30. 3 times 68 turn 3 times 16 turns out to be 48 but then you'd have to know both of these divide by 6 or you'd have to do it slower you can do this if you want 30 divided by 6 is 5 48 divided by 6 is 8 it works 
but would you rather do 48 divided by 6 or would you rather do 16 divided by 2 that you got smaller numbers if you do that? But it's your choice. Either way, the answer is 5 over 8, which is already reduced. So same deal here, 14 over 39 and 3 over 4. Whoops, 14 over 39, 14 over 39, 3 over 4. Now they often do this, but it doesn't have to be the case, but the, the two diagonals are being able to be, be reduced. 3 divides by 3, and so does 39, because 3 plus 9 is 12. If the sum of the digits divides by 3, then the whole thing divides by 3. 14 and 4 both divide by 2. So now you just go in order. 14 divided by 2 is 7. 39 divided by 3 is 13. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Now I got all numbers that are prime. These are all prime, yeah. Either prime or they just don't reduce anymore. So now you go straight across. 1 times 7 is 7. 13 times 2 is 26. And then you're done. If you tried to go straight across here, 14 times 3 is 42, which you might not have known. 39 times 4, you probably definitely don't know. So then you'd have to do this. 36 carry the 3, 12 plus 3 is 15. And then you'd have to reduce this, which would be, that's like the last homework. That's what the last homework was like. But that's hard because the numbers are so large. You'd probably never guess. You'd probably start by dividing them by 2, but it turns out they both divide by 6. And clearly 42 divided by 6 is 7, but it's not clear that 156 divided by 6 is 26. But apparently it is. 7 over 26. Okay, what if one of the fractions is an even a fraction? What if I have 28 times 4 sevenths? Now, this is not a mixed fraction. 28 times 4 sevenths is not equal to 28 and 4 sevenths, like the mixed fractions we had last time. This, the mixed fraction, there's an implied plus in between that they don't write. And that's hard to do because it doesn't have a common denominator. We'll do this next time, actually. So any number that's just a regular number can always be placed over 1. And it's the same thing. Any thing divided by 1 is itself. So then I could notice maybe that 28 and 7 both divide by 7. 28 divided by 7 is 4. One, this 1 and this 4 don't divide. But 7 divided by 7 is 1. Now you can do that. I can divide this by 7. I can divide this by 7 because 1 was in the top, 1 was in the bottom. Don't try to say, oh, this 4 and this 4 can reduce by 4 because they're both in the top. So now you just go straight across. 4 times 4 is 16. 1 times 1 is 1. And anything divided by itself is itself. I, I said that wrong. Anything divided by 1 is itself. And it's better to write 16 than 16 over 1 because it's, it's not technically simplified all the way if you don't put 16. But it's always good to think of it as over 1. It's okay in the middle of a problem to put over 1 to, if that helps make the problem easier. It's just in the final answer you don't want to do that. Now, if you're ever unsure, here's another thing. See if they'll take that answer. It did say write it in its lowest terms, but will they take 16 over 1 or do they consider that not really fully simplified? See, although your answer is equal to the correct answer, it's not in the correct form. So that's what this homework's for, is you can try things like that, and that's how you learn what's allowed and what isn't allowed. This is why working homework helps so much. 
a number of students run out of time and they try to do the test without finishing all their homework and that's where their scores really suffer because they didn't get a chance to see how to do this kind of stuff. Okay, find the product of two mixed numbers. If you do what we did at the end of the last homework first, that'll make this a lot easier. I want to do five and one half. That is plus between them, even though they don't write that. Times two and one third. Let's change these mixed fractions into improper ones like with the last two homework problems of the last section. So you go downward and multiply five times two is 10 and then you add going upward plus one is 11 and it's always over the same denominator. Times, same thing, go down and multiply two times three is six plus one is seven, and then it's gotta be over three. Once you've done that, now it's exactly the same as the last handful of problems. And 11 and seven are prime, two and three are prime, nothing's gonna reduce here. So I just go straight across, 11 times seven is 77, two times three is six, this definitely won't reduce because nothing in here reduced. If 2 doesn't reduce with two, 11 or 7, if 3 doesn't reduce with 11 or 7, then there's no way this answer can reduce. 77 over 6. Because otherwise it might be hard to tell. Does 77 over 6 reduce or not? Now, I'm reading the blue part. I, I make the mistake of not reading that sometimes. Type a whole number. That's if it comes out exactly. A fraction. I have a fraction. Or a mixed number. So they actually would take a mixed number if you wanted to do that. But it just takes longer. So I wouldn't waste time doing that when you can do it the easier way. Same kind of problem. Two and one fifth times one and three fourths. Two and one fifth times three and one fourth. No, one and three fourths. Change back to improper fractions. Two times five is 10. 10 plus one is 11 over five. One times four is four. Four plus three is seven over four. Five does not go into 11 or seven. Four does not go into 11 or seven. So there's nothing to reduce. Go straight across. 11 times 7 is 77. I keep getting that answer, but 5 times 4 is 20. Seventy seven over 20 will definitely not reduce because when I was at 11, 5, 7, and 4, nothing there reduced. 77 over 20. Oh, I didn't read the blue is the problem. Type a whole number, proper fraction, or a mixed fraction. This time they won't take an improper one. So now they're forcing me to go back to the improper one. I mean, to the mixed fraction. But we did that last time, so it's going to be something and something over 20. We know for sure the bottom's 20. But I need a front regular number and a top of the fraction. So how many times can 20 go into 77? How close can you get to that without going over? Four would be too much because four times 20 is 80. That's going over. So we'd have to do three. 20 times three is 60. The remainder would be 17, which notice is less than 20. So the remainder is 17 and the whole number is three. So three and 17 over 20. In the other class, you'll never have to do this as a final answer. They never make you change improper fractions to mixed fractions. They're, they're very cumbersome and not used very often, but they're just trying to give as many skills as possible here that they can give you. So this is equivalent to the answer, but it's not in the proper form. So I need a three here and I need, oh, this was a three and this was a 17. Three and 17 over 20. 
So I, I even fall for that where I don't read the blue every time. Type a whole number or a simplified fraction. Okay, so now we're in the other half of this assignment is how do you divide fractions? It's one step first, and then it's the same as all the others. So we have 15 over 33 divided by 5 over 13. Uh, I like this. This is almost like a little poem. When dividing, when dividing fractions, don't be shy. Flip the second and multiply because it rhymes. When dividing fractions, don't be shy. Flip the second and multiply. This helps a lot when you're doing a fraction divided by a fraction or even a number divided by a fraction, or a fraction divided by a number. So I have a fraction divided by a fraction. When dividing fractions, don't be shy. Flip the second, flip the second fraction, and multiply. If you flip the second fraction, you get to multiply instead of dividing. Dividing fractions actually is hard to try to do them directly. But if we use this little trick to flip the second and multiply, now we have exactly the same kind of problem in the first half of this homework. So I would check, do any of these reduce? Yeah, 15 and five, both divide by five. 13 is a prime number, it doesn't divide into 33. Neither one of those, divi well, 33 divides by three, but 13 doesn't. So nothing else can reduce. 15 divided by five is three. And then I got 33 that I didn't divide. 13 didn't divide, but five divided by five is one. Now, this can happen sometimes where once I've done this once, I might have to do this more than once. I'm now noticing that 3 and 33 both divide by 3. So just do it again. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 33 divided by 3 is 11. Now we're done reducing because 1s never reduce. And both 13 and 11 are prime, and they don't divide by each other, so... 13 times 1 is 13, and 11 times 1 is 11, so the answer is 13 over 11. Whole number or simplified fraction, we have a simplified fraction. But we don't need to make it a mixed number in most cases. Same deal here, 21 over 5 divided by 7 over 15. 21 over 5, Oops. Tw 21 over 5 divided by 7 over 15. When dividing fractions, don't be shy. Flip the second and multiply. I even get students in pre-calculus and calculus, I teach that too, and they... It may seem like junior high style, but they like it because it helps them when they get their complicated problems. 21 and 7 both divide by 7. 15 and 5 both divide by 5. 21 divided by 7 is 3. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 15 divided by 5 is 3. 7 divided by 7 is 1. Nothing else reduces, so go straight across. 3 times 3 is 9. 1 times 1 is 1. Remember, they won't take this answer, so 9 divided by 1 is 9. Anything divided by 1 is itself. Okay, what if one of the two is not technically a fraction, but it really is? So I'm really doing a fraction divided by a number here, 20 over 11 divided by four. It's th that my little poem still works here. 20 divided by 11 divided by four. 
any integer number or whole number can be a fraction by putting it over one. In fact, we just did the opposite a second ago. So here we had nine over one and we changed it to nine. You wouldn't want to do this for a final answer, but sometimes in the middle of the problem, it helps to do this direction. Change nine to nine over one just for a second. I'm going to change four to four over one. It's still division because I haven't flipped anything, but I have 20 divide, over 11 divided by four over one. That's equivalent. Now do the little phrase, when dividing fractions, don't be shy, flip the second and multiply. One and 11, they're done, but 20 and four both divide by four. 20 divided by four is five over 11. And then one over four divided by four is one. Five times one is five. 11 times one is 11. And since five doesn't reduce with 11, we're done. Five over 11. So that's really not a different problem if you put it over one. Anything that's just a number, put it over one, and then you can do the same strategy as the other problems. Even if the first number is a regular number, it still works. Eight divided by four fifths. Eight divided by four fifths is the same thing as eight over one divided by four fifths because eight and eight over one are technically the same thing. When dividing fractions, don't be shy, flip the second and multiply. Make sure it's the second fraction you're flipping, not the first fraction. One is done, five is done, but eight and four divide by four. Eight divided by four is two. And four divided by four is one. Now we're set to go straight across. Two times five is 10. One times one is one. So 10 divided by one is 10. Okay, mixed number divided by a fraction. Let's do like we did in the multiplying parts. Let's just change this mixed fraction to improper. Then it'll be like all the other problems. Six and three fourths divided by six and three fourths divided by three over 16. So I'm going to go down 6 times 4, 24, up and add, plus 3 is 27 over the 4. I haven't done the division process yet, so everything else is the same. So all I did was convert the mixed number into an improper fraction. Now it's the same as the last handful of problems. When dividing fractions, don't be shy. Flip the second and multiply. Whoops. I said it, but I didn't write it properly. Multiply. Notice you don't flip the first fraction, you only flip the second one. 27 and three both divide by three. 16 and four both divide by four. 27 divided by three is nine. Four divided by four is one. 16 divided by four is four. Three divided by three is one. If the bottoms are all one, the answer is just the top, nine times four. Maybe you noticed that on the other ones where I kept writing ones. 36 is the final answer. Oh, I was forgetting to give you guys your magic word of the day. So we better do a short word then. Let's do, the first letter is gonna be A. A is an apple. First letter is A is an apple. And we're almost done here, so I'll have to give them to you pretty quickly together. Okay, we got three problems left. Okay, so now I just have to do what we did on the last problem twice. Two and seven tenths. Two and seven tenths divided by 
two and five ninths. So go down two times 10, go up and add two times 10 is 20 plus seven is 27 over the original 10. We're dividing two times nine is 18, 18 plus five is 23 over the original nine. Now I have the classic fraction divided by a fraction. When dividing fractions, don't be shy. Flip the second and multiply. Okay, 27 divides by three and nine, but 10 and 23 don't. Nine only divides by three. 10 and three, 23 don't. So it seems like we could reduce this possibly, but apparently not. If nothing in here reduces, then you can't reduce at the end either. So the bottom's easy. 10 times 23 is 230. 27 times 9 is not so easy. 9 times 7 is 63. Carry the 6. 9 times 2, 18. Plus 6 is 24. So apparently 243 divided by 230 does not reduce because 27 doesn't reduce with 10 or 23 and 9 doesn't reduce with 10 or 23. If that's the case, then this big fraction won't reduce and there would be no other way to know that. 243 divided by 230. Now maybe they're going to make me put it back as a mixed number, but no, it does say fraction. So luckily I don't have to put it back. 243 over 230. Okay, the second letter for the magic word today is the letter C. C is in cat. Uh, I don't see anything different about this one that we've already learned. This one's actually easier than the last few. I guess they're just going back to this to make sure one thing, I guess I understand why they're doing this. Sometimes when you teach something to a student, they want to do it all the time, even when it doesn't apply. So 10 over 33 times 3 over 8. We've already done problems like this, but I think the reason they're throwing it all of a sudden at the end is you only do this divi uh, when dividing fractions... Don't be shy, flip the second and multiply. You only do that when dividing fractions. You don't do it for multiplying. The whole point is to get to multiplying. So don't try flipping anything here. You're all set to go right now. 10 and eight both divide by two. 10 divided by two is five. Eight divided by two is four. 33 and three both divide by three. 3 divided by 3 is 1. 33 divided by 3 is 11. 5 does not reduce with 11 or 4, and clearly 1 doesn't either. So then straight across is going to be the answer. 5 times 1 and 11 times 4. So we've done ones like this already, but I think that some I see that all the time with students too, is they learn that flipping fractions on division, and then you give them a multiplying one, and they want to try to flip that one. Don't flip multiply and only flip division. Five over 44. This original problem is multiplication, not division. Now they threw a division one back at us just to show you this. So I guess these last two are just for comparison purposes. Three eighths. Three eighths. This one is dividing, divided by 18 over 5. So if I, I always want multiplication, I never want division. So when dividing fractions, don't be shy, flip the second and multiply. But we might need to make a new poem about when multiplying fractions, don't do anything, just do them the way they are, because that's how the people try to do after they learn this. 3 times 5, well, let's see if anything reduces. 3 and 18 both divide by 3. 1 and 6. 
5 and 8 don't reduce, and 5 doesn't reduce with 6 or 8. So, and 1 never reduces with anything, so nothing else reduces. 5 over 8 times 6 is 48. 5 over 48. Okay, so we did the two assignments for today that was on the calendar. And got 100 on both of them. So I'm going to save this. And then if I look in my, my Math Lab account, assignments, everything is green check here. If I go to the assignments tab, I've done five homework so far on Monday, July 18th. We did 100, 100, 100 on Tuesday, July 19th, 100, 100. Wednesday, July 20th, we're going to do these two. And then that's the end of the videos for the week. Um, then you get Thursday and or Friday to work this quiz as much as you want. And that's all you're doing in this class for this week. So hopefully you get these done first each day and then you can concentrate on the other class. There'll be another video for the other class. And then remember, you only need to send me an email with the magic word of the day for the 0324 class. So I got one more letter here for today. The final letter for today is the letter T. T is in Thomas. So send me those three letters. It spells a certain word. And then you'll get credit for watching this video. And this video was about an hour long, just like the first one was too. So tomorrow there should be another roughly hour video that's going to cover homework 6 and 7 for the 0324 class. And see you tomorrow.